This is the Real Digital Transformation podcast series, empowering technology and business professionals to succeed with digital transformation. Now, here's your host, best-selling author, Thomas Earle. Hi, this is Thomas Earle, and welcome to another episode of the Real Digital Transformation podcast series. Let's talk about customer centricity. Instead of viewing customers solely as a source of revenue and as a necessity to operating a business, digital transformation advocates a mindset whereby customers are genuine assets that can provide long-term value as sources of revenue and data. Let's have a look at what it means to be customer-centric in the digital era. Many organizations have traditionally focused on the delivery of products to customers instead of establishing a focus on the customers themselves. Digital transformation advocates a foundational shift in an organization's business models to transform away from product orientation and to transform toward customer orientation. A product is something that is produced most commonly with the intention of selling it for revenue or providing it in exchange for something else of value. A product can be a physical item or it can be non-physical, such as the delivery of a service. Examples of physical products include cars, toys, machine parts, and computers. Examples of service products can include accounting services, delivery services, cleaning services, consulting services, and so on. The purchase of a physical product typically requires a transaction that results in the transfer of ownership of the product from the seller to the buyer. The purchase of a non-physical service product will typically involve a transaction for the delivery of the service. Such a transaction does not normally result in the transfer of ownership of the product. And, of course, some transactions may involve the sale of a combination of physical and service products. Products are typically associated with items purchased from private, for-profit organizations. However, other types of organizations can also offer products. For example, public sector organizations such as government departments offer a range of services. These services may not be directly for sale, such as services offered by nonprofit organizations, but they are offered to and consumed by customers and often involve the payment of fees. A common characteristic of physical products and service products is that they both generally have tangible value to the seller and buyer. A customer is an individual or an organization that purchases or acquires products. Private sector businesses generally exist to serve customers and generate revenue from customer interactions. Public sector organizations often have the responsibility to offer services of value to a public community, generally with the understanding that these organizations exist as a result of the taxes paid by the public community they serve. Individuals and organizations are not solely customers. Being a customer is a role that is carried out when they order and acquire products. While an organization may be a customer when it acquires products from one supplier, the organization itself may then assume the role of supplier when it then sells its own products to another organization, which then assumes the role of customer. Almost any type of organization is required to interact with customers. Traditionally, the emphasis of organizations has been primarily on the quality of the product it offers. The assumption here is that the greater the value or the perceived value of a product, the greater the satisfaction of the customer acquiring the product. This is a product-centric organizational model. In a product-centric organization, the product is the primary business entity around which many parts of the organization are built and structured. 
when an organization has several products, there has been a common tendency to build a separate organizational domain around each product. This can lead to silo-based organizational structures that become fragmented over time as each silo carries on its own life cycle and direction. Now, a customer-centric organization positions the customer as the primary business entity and then positions other parts of the organization, including relevant products and value-add services, with the goal of maximizing successful interactions and transactions with its customers. To achieve this goal, many of the previously silo-based organizational departments are required to collaborate. This then results in a broad organizational transformation that goes well beyond being extra nice to customers and extends into how technology is utilized to build customer-centric automation solutions. A classic example is a product-centric bank that has organizational silos for its current product portfolio, which may include savings accounts, mortgages, insurance, and investments. This product-centric business model leads to customers having to interact individually with the bank when inquiring about or acquiring each product. A customer acquiring all four products may resultantly end up having to create and manage four separate customer accounts. A subsequent maintenance task, such as updating an address or a phone number, may have to be repeated four times. This approach predictably leads to a sub-optimal customer experience. In this example, customers may have felt as though they purchased four products from four different banks. This approach is also not ideal, for the organization as it ends up with redundant and out of sync customer data and often an inability to gain genuine data analysis insights into customer trends and statistics. Now, when fostering relationship-centric customer engagements, the customer experience does not end after the purchase of a new product. Instead, That is often the starting point of what the organization hopes is to become a genuine relationship with the customer and a relationship that is not limited to the customer's interest in a given product. In fact, an organization may even pursue a long-term relationship with a customer who has not even purchased a product, but who perhaps fits the profile of a customer type that is viewed as a potential corporate asset. Now, ultimately, the customer orientation emphasis of a digital transformation will not only apply to our active customers that are purchasing or acquiring our products, it will apply just as much to any potential customers, which can be individuals or organizations that have not yet become our customers but that we have identified as customer candidates. So what I've just read in this podcast is a short excerpt from a chapter dedicated to customer centricity from the book, A Field Guide to Digital Transformation that I co-authored with Roger Stoffers. The entire chapter was also published on the LinkedIn newsletter, The Digital Enterprise. I would encourage you to dig deeper into the details of customer centricity. It is a field that has many aspects that we need to understand in order to correctly shape our business automation solutions in order to enhance customer experiences the best we can in order to be as successful with digital transformation as we can. Aspects around customer centricity include understanding customer facing versus customer oriented actions, transaction value versus relationship value actions. Also, aspects around relationship value and warmth, which include communicative warmth, proactive warmth, rewardful warmth, 
and exceeding warmth. And finally, also single, multi, and omni-channel customer interactions. When we study the science of customer centricity and we apply all of these different characteristics the correct way, it helps our digital business be as successful as it can be in reaching, satisfying, attracting, and retaining our customers. This is Thomas Earl. Thank you for listening today. Thank you for listening. Follow Thomas on LinkedIn 